All right, here we go. Can you see that it's recording? Yeah. Um, is there any, so normally I also just ask the guests to introduce themselves and et cetera. Sure. Sometimes I do like a pre-introduction. Um, anything other, like, so you're happy to talk about the book a little bit and then. Happy to talk about anything, literally anything, whatever, yeah. whatever you want to whatever get into. Comes up. Yeah. Cool. Personal questions, right, whatever. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. And, um, Okay. All right, Jay, welcome to the podcast. Everybody, this is Jay Cornby, and I often just ask the guests to introduce themselves because they always do a better job. So Jay, if you can please um, tell everybody what who you are, what you're up to, and sure. what's going on. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, my name is Jay Cornby. I'm a personal trainer. Uh, as you can hear, originally I'm from Australia. Uh, I've lived in Toronto for 12 years now. Um, it's actually an interesting little story is that I actually just moved here. I packed up my bags. Um, it's funny actually thinking about it mentally, I wasn't in a great place, which we could, we could go into later. I packed up my bags said I've had enough of what I'm doing. I wanted to change my life. So I moved to Toronto, started a personal training business and here I am. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I would love to. Sure. Why don't you? Can you explain to us what what? Sure. Motivated you to leave Australia? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm 37, about to turn 38, and I guess I was in my early 20s, and um, I was at that point in life where you kind of feel like you've sort of put yourself into a box. Um, you know, the friends that I had, the, what I was doing, I was partying all the time, going out. I was, didn't just sort of felt like my life was starting to kind of get into a box that I didn't know how to get out of. And so I just thought, you know what, the easiest way for me to like change all of this is to like move to a different country. Um, and so, yeah, I dedicated kind of a year of my life to, saving up and like focusing on getting to Toronto. Um, at the time, Canada was the easiest country for me to get to because they had a great um, work permit. So I could get a two year work permit. And then if I wanted to stay longer, I could get another one. So that's, that's why I chose Toronto. Uh, yeah, so I spent a year saving and like figuring out kind of getting myself over here. And Everyone always said, you know, oh, you'll be, you know, you'll be back. We'll see you in a couple of years. And I always knew deep down in my head, like that I was never going back. I was like, oh yeah, I'll see, yeah, whatever kind of thing. And I just totally like focused on getting here and then like reshaping my life kind of as I wanted. So it was like a really drastic measure, but I think sometimes you have to take like a massive step to really like put yourself in the right direction and just forced like everything that I was comfortable with everything about me that people kind of assumed people who knew who I was like when I moved here I was able no no one knew who I was like I didn't know anyone here at all um and yeah was able to like decide from that point okay who is Jay what does Jay believe in what you know what is his moral compass i was able to change that and direct that kind of as i was you know growing older yeah it's interesting yeah and so when you got here did you immediately like were you already a personal tra like a certified trainer and etc when you got here and then you just started found a place and got went to work kind of thing yeah so um my Fitness journey actually started when I was 17 um, and it's something that I've kept up with now for 20 years. Um, so I was a personal trainer. I started personal training um, and then I actually start, went into doing massage therapy. So RMT became an RMT. And then when I moved to Toronto, cut a long story short, I had to recertify 
as an RMT if I wanted to continue. And it was really expensive. I think it was like 15,000 or something crazy. And so I was like, no, nah, there's, I, there's no way I'm redoing everything that I just did. So I went back to fitness. Um, I started in a gym, kind of like a, a good life type gym and, and then worked there for a couple of years, worked my way up through personal trainer, head trainer, fitness manager, fitness director, kind of did everything as far up the traditional ladder you could go and then started my own uh, personal training business and uh, boot camp fitness classes. And I, now I've taken those two things and I've kind of combined them into really coaching and um, I kind of really dedicated now to overworked executives, people who are high functioning, um, who, who's like, there's always a bit of an element, I guess, for me, somehow lives are sort of a bit chaotic and I sort of bring in a sort of calm and control element, I guess, of like bringing people back down who've been working, you know, 10 hour days all the time. And it's like, okay, let, let's kind of, let's try and get your life back into order and, and find a, a better path um, than just working and trying to make money. Right. And so then fitness is the almost it's a lever or it's a place for, for people to disconnect maybe and get connected to their bodies and just be removed from that hectic pace, I guess, of life. And, and then yeah. what do they just start figuring out? Do they, I mean, can you describe how you've seen some people change as a result of getting into fitness or just starting to work out? I mean, it doesn't even matter. Yeah doesn't have to be all that serious. Yeah. So fitness, fitness is a funny thing because it's the one thing that no one wants to do. It's the, it's the best thing for you. Like, honestly, if I had a choice of like fitness, therapy, a job structure, whatever I would, I would pick fitness because I know that that, that all the other things will tie into looking after yourself first. So that to me is the number one. Um, mm -hmm. But people, people don't really realize that. I'm not, I'm not really sure why. I think when you know, when you know something is good for you, and I'm sure you could speak to this of like for therapy, getting help, getting kind of figuring your stuff out. We don't really want to do that. And I think we all subconsciously know that looking after yourself, eating better, working out, it's the right thing to do. And the, we sort of steer away from it. So to, to answer your question, when people start some sort of physical um, journey, it's like transformation can happen like within two weeks. It, it's so funny, people resist working out and looking after themselves for their entire life. And the moment they set foot into that, that path instantly, I mean, a big takeaway a sort of sign for me is vibrance coming out of their face. It's weird. I don't know how to describe it. It's almost like an aura, I guess, of, you know, people, people just looking after their body and their body actually starting to, regenerate itself properly it, it just craves movement it craves good food it craves um the mental stimulation of working out um also it also craves just that element of looking after yourself i think that self you know fitness and and eating well it's the ultimate self-care because you know the start the name of your podcast starts with me like it does start with you like fitness starts with you and health starts with you. Um, and no one else can, no one can really make you do those things. Like it's, it's totally up to you. So, yeah. yeah. So you see the kind of people are opening up in some sense or their, their bodies are responding to the changes and do you find that 
or have you seen people who make specific adjustments almost to their lifestyle afterwards or is it more of a way i mean i guess everybody differs um, but some people perhaps have some sort of an awakening maybe and and mm. they realize that they've been burning the candle too much you know working away or not taking care of themselves and then all of a sudden they realize wow this other pathway might be um, more fulfilling or, or I don't know, whatever it is. Yeah. Do you, mm. Like, have you seen that happen? Yeah. So, I mean, a big one is drinking. That's, that can be a huge change for people who are drinking casually almost every night within a couple of weeks of changing, kind of taking that path of fitness that normally is one of the first things to, to drop away, which is re it's really amazing because the, the, obviously the effects of drinking alcohol every, every night, even just on your body, forget about dependency and whatever, it, the extra calories that you're consuming. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that can be a trigger of saying, hey, you know, I'm trying to lose some weight or trying to get in shape. I'm actually eating too much I'm, I'm looking after like looking at what i'm eating oh i'm drinking five or six hundred calories a night that's a good trigger to get you to stop and often too like if i say to you you stop drinking or or anyone's you know you shouldn't be drinking five nights a week you're going to say jay bugger off i don't care i'm going to drink if i say to you you're consuming 600 calories a night and you're trying to lose weight, then you're going to say, okay, yeah, th th you're more likely to sort of say, yeah, you're right. Like kind of reframe health and fitness helps you to reframe things that you're doing in your life under a different lens that ordinarily you can easily just um, kind of to block. Does that make sense? Like same yeah. for like eating, yeah. you know, eating sugar all the time. Like that's a very easy thing to block and it's a, you know, you get addicted to sugar or it's helping you, you know, get through something else. But if you logically look at, hey, I'm eating too much sugar again, if I'm trying to lose weight or, or put muscle on, that be, they become better excuses to look after yourself than just trying on your own. It's almost like health, you know, health and fitness, taking a path of health and fitness, whether it's losing weight or gaining muscle or just trying to feel better or whatever your goals are, having that goal set up and sort of putting that on a pedestal allows you to then fix a whole bunch of things in your life that you ordinarily are just ignoring because there's no real reason to change. Like if I didn't work out, and wasn't had goals of staying sh uh, in shape. Yeah, I probably would drink most nights of the week and I would have dessert all the time because what, why wouldn't I? Like, there's no reason not to, but because I'm highly focused on staying in shape, I just know I can't have that goal and do all of these other things, you know, in my life, staying up late, etc. Yeah, I was just having the thought of, our lifestyles are not conducive to being active, generally speaking. And part of, you know, I often think of myself, part of my resistance to being more physically active or see, for me, I'm not sure what it is. Cause I, I'm, I play hockey and I've been working out with you lately, but like I get exercise for me, it's more about the dieting, I think. But there's something about kind of what you were saying in terms of when we start to take care of our body in a different way, it opens up, I don't know what it is, I guess the blocks you were kind of alluding to. Mm. Like I notice, I guess it improves our mood as well. So that helps us avoid foods we crave when we have low mood. Um, 
and I'm relative, I'm general, I'm not an expert on this at all. And I'm sort of speaking from experience. Um, and there's also, I think a tendency, it's like a double-edged sword. So there's, it's like a lack of self-confidence or mm. it's hard to articulate. I don't feel good about myself or if I try to engage in these activities and I don't do them in a way that I think I should do them, then that creates sort of a negative self image, or then I have to face feelings of yep. inadequacy or not feeling good enough or strong enough, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's a huge barrier. I know mm. it's an, it's a barrier for me under just slightly under the surface it's it's this yeah. idea that oh if i just don't do it then i don't have to feel all these uncomfortable feelings of yeah. pushing myself through change um yeah yeah and i guess uh, how do you yes yeah, so you it's... Act... Uh, wait can i ask you something sure right? yeah yeah because i want to can you give me an example of how that works for you in other areas of your life? Because sometimes we think people in fitness are these robots and machines, but uh, okay, just, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so let me let me. T I'm going to wind you. I wind the clock right back, and I'll sh I'll give a couple examples of where my life has like completely fallen apart, and I used fitness and getting healthy to get myself back on track because. Sure. Once you, once you've done it long enough, and you recognize the benefits that it gives you, it's an easy go to, like, or it's the only go to you have if you know it's the only way that will make you feel better. Like right, I don't right, know, yeah, yeah. I can't tell you what else would make you feel better other than a path of destruction when your <laughs> life is in <laughs> when your life is in chaos, <laughs> right. And really, like, I mean, what is something, what is something better than a good hard workout? Like, I, I don't, I don't think there is anything that can clear your mind and make you feel, because you're getting rid of getting those endorphins, getting those. You're actually releasing all the drugs in your brain and in your body that are designed to make you feel better. And there's nothing else that you can really do to release those things so to answer your question so when i was studying there was a point in you know that point where you're studying and then you stop studying and you're not really sure what you're going to do now that you've got a degree and and like you're not quite ready to get into you, you can't find a job and so i was in that sort of transitional period um i had been working out and then because i'd gone back to school didn't have a lot of i, I didn't have a lot of money um, and I stopped working out briefly. And then I was in that cycle of like staying up all night. Um, and because I was up all night, then I was sleeping all day. Then I felt like crap. And then mm -hmm. I was trying to find a job. And so I would get up at like two in the afternoon and then I would like search some jobs and it was awful. And <clears throat> that cycle was happening for, I don't know, I can't remember now, a month or two. And then I just said, you know what? you got to, you got to break this cycle, um, get yourself back to working out and feeling, feeling good about yourself. So I bought a one month membership. I remember this so clearly because I remember getting uh, paying for a one month membership because that's all I could afford. And I just started going to the gym and within, with, within days, I could feel this sort of change happening over my self-confidence was coming back. I mean, you do a nice hard workout. You, you, you do feel good about yourself, you, you yeah. know, you, because you'd released those things that are designed to make you feel good about yourself. So then because I was working out, I was then tired. So then I was going to bed earlier. I was motivated to get up and go to the gym again. And because I was getting up earlier, then I was applying for jobs in the morning and having more of a chance to actually get an interview than applying for a job <laughs> at five o'clock at night when everyone else is already submitted and so on and so forth. And so those by simply going to the gym, doing a workout, 
it triggered this flow on effect of, of eventually getting me out of that hole that I was in. Um, so that was, let's say, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. Let's fast forward to this year, COVID. So fitness industry has been absolutely crushed, like devastating. There's studios around the city are just closing left, right and center. Um, so I was heavily, heavily and still are heavily affected by it. Yeah. So lockdown happens. Everyone just, you, you remember back in March, everyone just says, oh, we're, we're all locked in and everyone just stops doing everything. Routines just completely stop. I couldn't go to, I was used to working out at the gym, couldn't go to the gym. I stopped working out like everyone else did. And that spiraled me down into, um, I wouldn't say depression, but I was definitely not my kind of usual self. And I just had to get to that point and say, you know what, you got to start working out again. Like you can't go to a gym, figure something else out. So I went to where, <laughs> yeah, I went to where my boot camp um, was held. Where I had all this equipment there and I brought it all back to my house and started working out outside which is something that I've never done in 20 years. I've always worked out inside a gym. But by doing that, you know, it improved my mood, it got me feeling good again. I actually then started rebuilding my business, started training people outside, and it kind of got things up and running for me where for those first six, seven weeks, yeah, it was, it was not in a good place. And... So in those six, seven weeks, I mean, I guess everybody was just kind of totally in some state of shock almost. Um, I, what were some of the things that you, that were dragging you down? Like, I'm just kind of curious, you know, it's, I, it's so helpful. I think for other people to hear what goes on in other people's heads, because yeah. then we feel more human, you know, and less, yeah. less. Yeah. So I just kind of curious what you, when you, or how about this, even now, because with the recent shutdown, like gyms were just opening up again and then it all went back down. So I'm just kind of curious what, what you're sort of the part of you that gets into that doomy place and, yeah. What does it say? What is it thinking? How does it kind of just go off on its, on its, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this second shutdown, the one that's, that we're sort of in right now, this, this last month probably was one of the toughest mentally for me um, because I had, I had just started back to train people at a gym <laughs> <laughs> so the gyms have been closed all year. So it was like, I got beat down at the start. So yeah. recovered from that, got myself back up working and, you know, trying to make some money. Gyms shut, then they reopened. And remember there was, you could have 10 people in a gym. So it was really difficult to actually get a position to get people back into a gym. So I started training for, for one week, I, I convinced everyone it's safe. We can go back to a gym and then bang, it closed again. And, and when that closed again, anyone who was training, just everyone just threw their hands up and said, I'm done for physical activity. That, that's what most people have, have said. Um, so yeah, it was just, it completely kind of crushed my motivation. Um, again, crush my motivation to work out, to rebuild business again. Um, you know, people always turn, as a trainer, you're sort of a therapist, like there's, or how I do business anyway, there's a huge element of kind of therapy and people come to me for inspiration and, and conversation and, and, and guidance, sort of life guidance. I don't like to use the word life coach because that's, it seems a bit sort of, I don't know, to me, it's a bit of a cheesy word, but, but I fall into that category 
I guess by default, um, just because of my personality and, and kind of other skills that I have. So everyone's turning to me for life help. And I'm like, dude, I can't even help my own life right now. Like <laughs> my life's in chaos. Um, yeah, so it's really, when the tables kind of get flipped and you, you, you're suddenly the one that's like, oh, I need help now. Um, really, really challenging. And what I found helpful actually for, for listeners who are, who are listening to this is talking at actually owning that you feel like shit has probably been one of the best things for me in the last month. Um, not just saying, yeah, I'm fine. Like the default, we all say, yeah, I'm fine. How's things? Oh, I'm fine. How's business? Oh, it's okay. How's life? Oh yeah, it's a bit tough or whatever. Is like last month I have owned the fact that I have not felt good. To, to the point where I think you need to own it enough to then say, okay, you know what? You've owned enough of it, so now it's time to change it. And, and that's the big step that a lot of people don't do is you have to get, you're allowed to, you're allowed to cry and you're allowed to be mm -hmm. upset. Mm -hmm. But there comes a point where then it's up to you. It starts with you, starts with me <laughs> to change that because everyone else is going through their own stuff too, right? So I owned it for a couple of weeks. I told everyone, yeah, things are tough. And like, I don't want to hear you complaining you can't go to the movies because I can't work right now. Like <laughs> my problems are, <laughs> are more, more than yours in, in my mind. Um, <laughs> owned it, talked about it enough that when you talk about your problems with someone, you're listening to yourself and you're listening to how you you're explaining to someone how you feel like and it's a very unnatural thing for people to do to really say yeah i feel like shit because x y z but when you say that a few times it's like okay what well, i'm feeling shit because of these things what can i actually do about those things to change them um so it's really important. I think it's like a really key thing is have a cry, own it, feel it, but then after a while say, okay, I've had enough. And that's normally where fitness and a healthy routine should be your next and number one go-to. Always go to fitness and health and getting yourself feeling good before you try a bunch of other things. Like there's no point in me trying to rebuild my business or, or do anything else until I take control and, and look after me. Because once I get those endorphins going and those chemicals and I'm starting to feel good about myself, I'm all of a sudden motivated now. I have the willpower to do other stuff. You know, it's, we always try and jump that part. It's like, oh, I'll start working out once I'm sleeping. There's sort of all these excuses that we make to say, well, once my kids go back to school, that's a, that's a great one. My, once my kids are back at school or daycare, I'll start looking after myself. Once, once this big presentation is over that I've got to do, I'm sure for you, like um, finishing up my, you know, finishing schoolwork. Once I finish that or get through my big assignment, I'll look after myself. It's like, no, that is the number one step first because you look after yourself you'll do better in your assignment. You look after yourself, you'll do better at rebuilding your business. You look after yourself, anything you could possibly think of at the, that you're trying to achieve will always happen better if you look after yourself first. That was beautiful. Um, yeah, that was amazing. A wonderful kind of explanation of that process. Um, I really like the, yeah, the idea of, owning owning our experience or or being being willing or open to acknowledging how we're feeling in a sincere way as opposed to as you mentioned just kind of using the platitudes of i'm fine i'm this i'm that there's an amazing acronym for for fine 
fucked up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. Mm. <laughs> That's such a good one. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Um, so, yeah, that was, it was so nice to hear you describe that. And also, as you were, I was reminded, and I, I think I need more reminders like this, is that when we just take care of ourselves first, everything else finds its way to work out. And I remember when I sobered up, it was drilled into my head, thank goodness. It was, if you put anything in front of your recovery, you will lose it. And, mm. and that I took that so seriously for so long. And I still do, although because I'm so much healthier now, and I have a much, perhaps, I have a much better life. Um, I, I, I still make my self care really important, but I, I've noticed I do have a tendency to put tasks or put what I think I should be doing to create the life I think I need mm. ahead of taking care of myself. And, and that is just such a good reminder. And, and you said it so well, just, okay, if I just start taking care of myself and doing yeah. the things I need to do, then everything else, or it's almost as if, and you said it so nicely, you can't figure out how to get out of the hole until you feel better or until you've, you've, you've gone inward first. And then yeah. when you feel better, then the solutions and the pathways open themselves up for you, yeah. or at least you feel better or more capable of finding the pathways. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like it's, I don't know how to, to like, if, if there's anything from this conversation that people take away is that you, you just have to start looking after yourself in, it doesn't have to be this huge life transformation. Just yeah. do something like when your head is all fucked up, the last thing you want to do is say, oh, I'm all fucked up. I need to go to see a doctor and a therapist and I need to start working on my, like my mental health is screwed right now. That's not going to happen. I would never do that. I know that because I just can't, I wouldn't will myself. That's like going from the, the worst place and trying to jump yourself all the way right. to the end. Yeah. I'll just say, you know what? I'm fucked up right now. I don't want to talk to anyone, but I will go and do 10 push ups today. Start with that. And I'm not saying don't go a doctor, therapist, and all these other things that you do need to do, but start, start with some sort of looking after yourself. And I want to make it clear too, is that when I'm talking about a health and fitness routine, that is to your interpretation, not mine. So what I would do for health and for me to get myself mentally going again, that doesn't mean that you have to do that or, we all have our own place that we need to go to. Um, so don't feel intimidated by the fact that, well, I don't even work out now or I don't have a gym or I don't know how to, I don't like physical exercise. It may be a simple thing as getting outside and going for a walk. Like for me to really get myself going because I've worked out for 20 years and if I need to really like break something, like I will and I mean, break something in me, I will go mm -hmm. and like, I'll try and put, I'll just like go to a leg press machine and I will stack up like as many plates as I could on it. And I'll just try and push it and, and kind of be like, you're either going to push this way or you're going to break your knees. I'm not saying to anyone to do that because yeah. that doesn't work for you, but it works for me because, because of how long I've worked out. For you, it may be, a walk and 10 push-ups and I'm going to commit to that for the next five days and that could be just just that simple thing could well be enough to get the ball rolling get you feeling good all of a sudden you're you know what I'm going to have a salad I'm not going to drink tonight I'm going to go to bed a little bit earlier I'm gonna like just feel like I want to call a friend now like, honestly that that the, all of those things that can feel very unrealistic when you're in like a terrible headspace, 
can instantly change from 10 push-ups and a walk around the block. Like, trust me, it's, it sounds crazy, but it's, I've seen it a thousand times over and 10 push-ups can build to, to 20 push-ups and 10 squats. And maybe you walk around the block and it becomes a jog and so on and so on. And eventually you get to the point where you're an idiot like me who says, okay, I'm going to go and try and push as much weight as I can. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, there's a few things. One is, yeah, you know, we, and you see this in when people are in crisis in their life um, or when they're, you know, really kind of stuck is, I think it's a part, it's almost whatever. We think that, so when, when this is kind of a, a delusion of, I, you could call it a pathology maybe, or the part of our mind that's sick and unwell almost fantasizes about, okay, this is so bad, but if I just say, oh, I'm going to go, like you said, go to the doctor, get a therapist, do all, you know, you, you conjure up this fantasy that is this perfect solution to your current problem that's so unrealistic and, and not ever going to happen, but it, it, it's like the state of denial that frees you from the present moment discomfort of your suffering. And then people will reach out to a therapist and they'll throw all these sort of, I don't know, rocks in the pond, whatever it is. Uh, but then they don't end up doing anything. And, and then, and then you mentioned just, it's just one foot in front of the other. What's the next thing I can do that's going to help me get out of this hole and yeah. and that it could just be a walk around the block it could be a phone call of two push-ups you know it's like anything that just helps me move out of this cycle that's taking me downward yeah. so to speak is um, but I think there really is something to that this sort of Oh God, the words are escaping me, but it's a form of denial or avoidance, just yeah. this sort of fantasy that I'm just going to fix everything all at once. And then I don't yeah. end up doing anything at all. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, in our, in training with you personally, I found it really helpful to have those conversations with you on like, I know I can't pretend that I'm just going to all of a sudden be 20 pounds lighter or this or that it's yeah you know what is the next little thing i can do um and maybe actually can you speak to we had this chat the other day around i think something like meeting meeting your clients where they are so if one client i think you described it as some clients just want to come work out chat and go home um, they don't want the big plan. They don't want the et cetera, et cetera. And so that's yeah. what you provide. And I, I had this thought, oh, that sounds like I'm that type of that sounds, That's me. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, well, that, just kind of how you see that. Well, that, well, that, um, I, I think that kind of goes back to what I was just saying about how whatever you, you do, whatever you need to do to get you feeling better. So if someone coming to me and doing a workout and chatting for an hour gets them feeling great about themselves, that is just as a valid workout as someone who comes and is like, don't talk to me, crush me. I mean, I, I've trained someone who was a stuntman who literally was like, push me to the point where I'm just going to spew in a bin. That's how... What that, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what that's what he wanted. <laughs> Give me the hardest workout. I need to get as fit as possible. I'm filming a movie. It's like, okay, dude, let's do, let's go for it. His approach is just as valid as your mm -hmm. approach, mm -hmm. because the whole point of well, like what we're saying is you got to do what is going to make you feel better. But like his approach is completely wrong for someone else. <laughs> who if they're spewing, right. they, they push themselves so hard, they spew in a bin, then they're literally will probably never work out again in their life. So fitness industry 
is very confusing for people because there's this illusion of we all have to have abs and we all have to crush workouts and you're on Instagram and it's all everyone's just crushing it and you know <laughs> that is just complete nonsense and half the reason why most people don't actually look after themselves is because they're so intimidated by this sort of false facade of health and fitness and yeah. eating and dieting and like it just becomes too complicated so again whatever works for you is good and the point is you're doing why are you doing it you're doing it to make you feel better and to to let you feel uh, good about yourself to make yourself get stronger to make yourself get healthier and to also just you're giving something to you like health and fitness is the one thing that only you can give to yourself I, th I think I don't think of any there's nothing else I mean you can say oh you can love yourself but you health and fitness you are loving yourself like the fundamental one thing that you can do and give to yourself that no one else can is health and fitness and looking after yourself, mm -hmm. whatever your version is. And you just have to figure, excuse me, you have to figure out what, what that is to you. And sometimes that just means you, you have to explore health and fitness to figure out what that is and not be intimidated by it. Like, don't just not look after yourself because you don't know what is going to get you off, you know, like maybe it's yoga, maybe it's Pilates, maybe it's boxing, maybe it's heavy workouts, maybe it's just running, maybe it's skiing. I don't know. But if you don't know, try them, mm. see if you like them, you know? Yeah. Every, everyone just sort of feels like it's either all or nothing. And everyone, the society is kind of telling us that it's that it's all or nothing. It's like, you're either fit and healthy or you're just fat and a slob and you don't do anything. Well, the scale is, it's very, it's very big. You know, I, I kind of use this. This is actually something I use with all of my clients and it's, it's useful for, for people listening and, and for yourself too, is if you think of it, look at a scale between zero and a hundred, you have to decide where, and you have to be realistic to yourself where do I sit on that scale and where do I want to sit on that scale? So let's say at a hundred is like a fitness model. It, it's my life is completely dedicated to fitness. Zero is obviously nothing. So where do I truly, truly sit right now? And where do I truly, truly would be happy with myself? So everything should always, again, something that a lot of people don't talk about is ultimately you want to be happy with yourself that's what we all want happiness like i would i would think you would agree so what if i'm going to be healthy and fit and like look after my body and i want to visually improve myself where on that scale of zero to 100 can i honestly say that i would that i could look at myself in the mirror and say mike i'm happy with myself and it's different for everyone. So I don't sit at a hundred. I'm not a fitness model. I have competed in fitness competitions and bodybuilding. That's at a hundred. It's not for me. I, I don't want to live my life at a hundred. I don't, if you want to, it's great. Like a lot of people I know do, it doesn't work for me. So, so I have, even though I want to look like, this is the tricky thing. I want to look like I, I'm a fitness model at a hundred percent but I'm not willing to do the work required to sit at a hundred because it's too difficult for me. So I, I say like, okay, I'm going to sit at 80 and, but I have to be honest with myself and say, Jay, you're choosing to be at 80 and be happy. Now you could sit at 70 or 60 or 50. It doesn't matter. It's everyone's an individual, but once you can figure out where I sit on that scale that I can truly say, I'm happy with what I'm doing. So if you've got two kids and you're running a business and your life, you know, is, is crazy, maybe for you sitting at 50% or for someone at home, like 
if you can say, you know what, the fact that I'm actually doing something makes me feel happy, then own it. And don't try and the, the illusion that you're actually going to be a fitness model or that you're going to lose 20 pounds and you're going to have a six pack. If that's really not realistic, then let it go so it doesn't bug you all the time. Because everyone sits with this weight, constant weight of like trying to lose weight, trying to get a six pack, trying to be. And it's like, you either can have that because anyone can have that. So if you want it, own it and get it. If you don't want it, let the burden go and shut up about it. (laughs) Because you're just fucking your head up all the time, constantly talking about trying to lose weight. It's like, Either lose weight or don't, but but own own where you sit on that scale to just l- release the burden. Is, yeah. is that helpful? Yeah, I think so for sure. I think it's easy to get lost in where we think we should be, and it's sort of whether it's fitness or work or I should read more books or I should do more that. Like I mean, it just it's endless, and so yeah, I do. I yeah. it is really helpful to kind of find space in those situations where you can honestly just take stock of where you are and let go and make a decision. And that does increase opportunities for contentment. And I would just as a, (laughs) I don't know what it is, a picky, a pickiness in some sense, but it's happiness is a byproduct that we experience at times when we live a full and meaningful life Mm. we can't always be happy we can't you know the pursuit of happiness etc it that can be its own trap in some sense but i think Mm. doing the things doing as many or being on a pathway to doing things we know are good for us and having a sense of accomplishment and and not setting unrealistic goals and etc and sticking to that that we're more likely to be happy from you know or experience happiness and then for you know there also there is also and i'm not i can't reference it as precisely as i'd like to but certain people i think i'm in this camp i'm not sure it's probably all the drug use but we just aren't capable of experiencing positive emotion as much as other Mm. people are and that's like a a, who knows that's an evolutionary thing or a a, um, genetic thing but just some people are more wired to be happier more often and it doesn't matter how much of this and that that you do you're just kind of confined in some ways by some of that um And, but that's not a barrier. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do anything or whatever. That's just kind of how things are. Um, and I guess somehow it's, it's, we've been talking for a while already. Um, and I don't want to miss the opportunity just to kind of get some info on, on the book you've written almost. I mean, I know you're almost kind of at the end stage. And so can you tell yeah. everybody about the book and like what it's sure. sort of, aiming to do and yeah sure yeah so i have it's in the publishing stage i've written a book called your personal revolution so my business is called personal revolution um a personal revolution if you're like oh what does that mean if you kind of think of um well a revolution is if you take it to like the the literal meaning of the word is is a rising up to overthrow government um I can't remember the other the definition of it, but personal revolution is you rising up and overthrowing the things that are holding you back. Um, so that's that's kind of the the thing that I really am holding on to now as I've kind of developed uh, over my career is that we have the it is us it's us rising up inside ourselves to to become who we want to be. So I've created a five-step process that I put clients through where clarity, measurements, discipline, nutrition, and exercise. So I'll say it again, clarity, measurements, discipline, nutrition, and exercise. So what 
people always start with nutrition and exercise. It's like the two things that everyone's like, I need to, if I'm going to get better, I need to eat better and exercise. And that's why I constantly fall off the wagon is because we don't do the pre-work that's required before we do nutrition and exercise. There's no point doing nutrition and exercise if you don't have clarity on why you're doing it in the first place. Um, there's no point doing nutrition and exercise if you don't have the, the measurements to track what you're actually doing. So tracking improvement, tracking how much you're eating, tracking what you're actually doing. If you don't track something, you can't improve it. You know, it's that if you don't measure, you measure it. If it can't be measured, it can't be improved. So doing that kind of work and then discipline. There's no point starting a diet or exercise if you have no discipline because it's, it's not going to last. So anyway, so they're the five steps and I've written a whole book based around all of these five principles. And I'm actually really proud of it because I have created, I'm giving as much as I know to each of these five steps in a way that if you read the book, you will be able to, if you follow the steps through, you'd be able to look after yourself. I kind of truly believe that if you did everything that I said in that book, that you would be able to have a personal revolution and, and look after yourself. So that'll be coming out um, early next year, which I'm excited about. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's a huge uh, accomplishment, no doubt, especially considering all the madness that's been going on. Have you found it? How is that? In, how did that impact the writing process and everything else? Um, the madness didn't affect the writing process because I was super disciplined when it came to actually writing it. Um, so it hasn't hasn't luckily what didn't didn't affect it in any, in any way, which was good because I was just really wanting to to get it out and get it in people's hands and. And giving people the opportunity, you, you know, fitness is a pre, having a trainer or have working with someone, it is a really privileged thing to be able to do. And so yeah. I wanted to create something that I felt genuinely, um, a genuinely, you know, often like a books, you read them and there's like all the good bits seem to be kind of kept back. It's like, if you really want to know how to do it, you've actually got to sign up for this course or work with me or whatever. I, I really wanted to just create something that I could give to someone who couldn't afford a trainer and say, here's, here's everything. Here's what people pay me thousands of dollars for. It's, it's yeah. yours to, it's yours to read and, and take on yourself. Yeah. So um, actually, so if anyone does want to get on the um, waiting list for that, if you go to www. 30 day meal planner um you sign up to the email list i've actually got a bunch of recipes and stuff as a gift there you can grab and then i'll let you know when the book comes out awesome so you have you own the domain name w uh, dot meal 30 day meal planner 30 day meal planner yeah yeah That's so awesome. i actually have a yeah i actually have a, a 30 day meal planner there that you can download for free and a bunch of other things so yeah. Awesome. And so wait, that's separate from what a, can you maybe just share your other social media website contact sure. stuff? Like it'll be, it'll be in the show notes or whatever, but sure. Yeah. yeah. So if you go, if you do go to 30, 30 day meal planner.com that will put in sign up, that'll put you on my email list, which will um, get you notified when the book comes out. I also do send out a weekly um, email, really short little one, which is all things fitness, health, interest to me, um, which, which I really enjoy and get a lot of good feedback on. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at The Personal Revolution. You can find me on Facebook. I don't use it a lot, but it's Personal Revolution Fitness. And if you just want to reach out to me, it's j at thepersonalrevolution.com. If you need help with anything, please reach out. I always love to, to chat with people. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Right on. Thank you, sir. Um, thank you. Yeah, for, you know, for, I guess I mentioned it here and there, but I've been working out with you off and on through all this madness outdoors. 
Uh, we had a nice yeah. one in the cold last last few days ago, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'll see you on Thanks, Friday. Man. I'll yeah. see you on Friday. <laughs> and yeah, guys, guys that are, guys that are listening, please just remember that just doing something is better than nothing. And don't don't not do something because you don't know what to do. And honestly, if you really have no idea what to do, please just send me an email and I'll gladly send you a workout. I'll get you started. It's it's be a privilege and an honor to me. So do not do, you know, if, if there's a roadblock, send me an email. We'll get you started. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Thank you so much. No worries, mate. See ya. Bye. Cool. Thank you. That was awesome. That was great. Yeah. Oh, that was so, fun. Yeah, that was. That was really good. I at one point I was like, I gotta, I gotta put a timestamp on this. So I like brought up my, <laughs> <laughs> I brought, I got up a note. I was like, da, 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 da. yeah, cool. It's awesome. Which part? Um, I don't know. Thirty-one minutes. I wrote down here at the thirty-one minute mark. It was. Uh, I think it was the part around just like one foot in front of the other kind of i can't remember yeah. exactly right now but I'm it was I a good it, it sounded it sounded good it's a good sound bite yeah no, it was really good it was great it was really well it was yeah it was awesome thanks man i appreciate it it's great yeah. for me to um cut my teeth on a on a long podcast so yeah i appreciate you yeah. having me on because it's sure. it's something i want to start my own at some point so being able to kind of get a feel for it is really good and to to feel like it's something that i actually want to do and engage with because i think it's you know if you don't want to do it or you're not sure it's like don't start it because <laughs> it's a lot of work <laughs> <laughs> for sure yeah no it was great I'm, I'm i'm glad we did it i appreciate your time and um I'm not sure usually it's it's i got it all sort of sorted out within a few weeks so sometime in the okay. next few weeks i'll i'll have it all ready to go cool man appreciate yeah, you on. love you for sure I'll likewise you. love you too see you friday. i'll see you on friday yeah see you man bye bye